गुड इवनिंग लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन टुडे वी डील विद इनकम टैक्स सब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज शोन टू बी डिफिकल्ट बट इट इज वेरी इजी हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर स्टडीड इनकम टैक्स जस्ट रेज योर हैंड्स लेट्स सी ओ दैट्स वेरी फ्यू ऑफ यू एंड ऑल ऑफ यू आर न्यू कमर्स आई बिलीव यू जॉइंट प्रोफेशन यू जॉइंट दी चेंबर ऑफ एनी सीनियर और यू आर इंडिपेंडेंट ऑल ऑफ यू okay but then judiciary has nothing to do with income tax they are all novice like me oh okay okay and what about you at the back you are all new to this subject well i will take you to uh, through the basics of income tax and uh, i may just remind you that if you join a senior or you start practicing on the income tax side then you must have a grip of the basics if you do not have the basics know the basics then it is very difficult for you to practice on the tax side particularly because in most of the law colleges income tax is an optional subject rather in my uh, point of view it should be made a compulsory subject all of you would be filing your returns of income tax very shortly after you joined your profession as a lawyer or in a company or you are uh, you join any organization multinational company so you must know the intricacies if not intricacies at least the basics of income tax and i don't know my friend tells me they all of them they have studied income tax there is a misnomer that income tax deals with something known as mathematics it's all mathematics but no it is not it deals with interpretation of various subjects if you don't know land laws if you don't know constitutional law if you do not know administrative law it is really very difficult for you to deal with income tax we shall shortly discuss and if you have any questions i'll i have split up the session in two parts 20 minutes i'll tell you the basics and 10 minutes you can ask me any questions and then i'll give a reply is that all right all right now you all of you know that every year we have to file a return of income what is this filing of return of income it is nothing but a declaration of a liability to pay tax then the assessing officer he processes the income tax return and if he has any doubts with regard to the shortage of payment of income tax or understatement of income tax he issues a notice to you and he passes what is known as the order of assessment now under the income tax act three golden principles you must remember one is declaration of a liability the second is determination of a liability and the third is recovery or quantification of the liability and recovery by the income tax officer what you have to pay now declaration of a liability is concerned in so far as it is nothing but filing of a return of income you file your return of income that is you declare your liability whatever you have to pay or whatever you don't have to pay now thereafter the income tax officer he determines your liability what is known as assessment proceedings through the process of assessment proceedings now after he has assessed you by passing an assessment order he then recovers the amount or he gives you the refund which you are legally entitled to you may have paid more of tax by way of advance tax you know there are three dates of paying advance tax it is the idea behind is pay while you earn 15th of june 15th of september 15th of december 15th of march and then you file your return within 6 months by 31st of july these are the three very important dates for every chartered accountant or a lawyer who practices on the tax side he always makes his clients uh, aware of the fact that return has to be filed hurry up show me or whatever you have earned whatever you have paid by way of advance tax etc now in this process after the declaration of liability 
there are two stages. Either the income tax officer accepts whatever you have said. Now that is self-assessment. That is known as self-assessment. He issued you, issues you an intimation. Intimation means an order. He intimates you that, well, whatever you returned is correct. Or any shortfall is there, he tells you that, yes, this is the shortfall. Kindly make the payment of the amount. Now, if he entertains a doubt, then he issues you a notice for regular assessment. It is the second stage. A regular assessment is an assessment where he examines your books of accounts, your returns, and then he concludes after providing you with an opportunity of hearing that, yes, this is the correct amount payable. That is known as the regular assessment proceedings culminating into the passing of an assessment order. Now, thereafter, if anything is remains payable, then he issues you a notice for recovery. That recovery under the Act, there are provisions. He can attach your house if you don't make the payment. If you make the payment, well, then the matter rests. Then there are provisions with regard to the appeal. Now, against an order of assessment or intimation, you can file an appeal before the first appellate authority, which is known as the uh, Commissioner of Income Tax Appeals. Now, after the CID appeals has passed an order, it is further appealable before the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal, which is headed by the judicial member, accompanied by an accountant member. That order, against that order, you can file an appeal before the Honorable High Court under Section 260, Capital A, which is paramateria with, I think you read CPC, must have read CPC. Section 100 CPC is paramateria to Section 260A. On a substantial question of law, an appeal lies before the Honorable High Court. Now, this is so far as the assessment proceedings are concerned. After the assessment proceedings have run out, have, complete, have been completed or finalized at any of these stage, then comes the reassessment proceedings. That is another chapter which is very important and in fact there is a lot of litigation which follows in the High Court by way of writ petitions. Now, under the reassessment proceedings, the ITO issues you a notice, the assessing officer. That is based on earlier prior to 1421, it was based on the material which he gathered and he formed an opinion that assessment has escaped, assess uh, escaped assessment. The income has escaped assessment. Now he frames reassessment, he issues you a notice if he has reasons to believe. Now that order again is appealable before the CIT appeals and it is further appealable before the ITAT, Income Tax Appellate Tribunal and further appeal to the Honorable High Court. This is a reassessment. Then the next stage is best judgment assessment, where the SSE does not cooperate. He does not uh, participate in the proceedings, either assessment proceedings or reassessment proceedings. Then he passes an order of best judgment assessment. That is the third stage. Best judgment assessment is that whatever the material he has on the record, he passes the order of re uh, best judgment assessment. So this is the process of assessment under the Income Tax Act. I think, I think now I've made myself very clear, there is nothing, no mathematics involved. There is no mathematics. People who join the profession, they do not enter income tax uh, profession only because of the fact that it involves something which is mathematical. You know, students normally who join LLB are poor in mathematics like me. So they say, no, 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 this field is very difficult. We won't join. But it has nothing to do with mathematics at, at all. I can assure you, I can guarantee you. What is it involved with Hindu law? Now, a person, who is a person? A person is accessible under the Income Tax Act. Now, who is a person? Person could be? HUF. What is an HUF? Who will tell me? Let's see how many of you can reply. Hindu undivided family. Now, how does it come into existence? So it requires one uh, uh, main member? No, that is different than how does... He, I've asked you a very pertinent question. There are two things. How does HUF come into existence? And what constitutes HUF? 
All of you have been taught what constitutes a male member. Le yes, legally descendant with members what are known as, who are known as co-pars. That, that is like saying what constitutes HUF. But how does it come into existence? No. No. It is not a contract. It comes into existence by status. It is not like a partnership firm. How does it come into existence? Demark laga off. Now let's see. I can guarantee you 90% of the persons in India, including lawyers and judges, I'm being very emphatic. They cannot answer this question. How it comes into existence in contravention to how what constitutes HUF? Laga off na dimaag. How does HUF come into existence? No, nothing doing. All right, I'll tell you. A person should be a Hindu and he should be married. These are the two conditions if upon the fulfillment of which the HUF comes into existence. If you ask yourself a question, are you a Hindu? Yes, I am. Are you married? The moment these two conditions are satisfied, HUF comes into existence. But what constitutes HUF or Hindu joint family is something different. Where all of you are taught, O rata rata sentence, male member, linearly descendant, consisting of female members who are known as Members, male members are known as co-partners. So now under the Income Tax Act, the definition of a person includes HUF. So if you are not conversant with Hindu law, how will you project your case and how will the assessing officer determine your liability? If you are not an HUF, you are, not, you are a Hindu but you are not married, and you file your return, you show your income, as accessible under the uh, HUF, will the ITO be competent enough to declare you as an HUF? If he doesn't know, he can declare you and normally he doesn't know. So one thing is very sure, you must know Hindu law. All right. Now next branch of law, constitutional law. You all must have read Kelson's theory, Grand Norm. Article 265 is the grand norm. What does Article 265 say? Any one of you bestowed your conscious attention on this provision? No taxes shall be levied or imposed, save except by the authority of law. This is what Article 265 is. No taxes shall be levied, save except by the authority of law. So which is that authority of law that is income tax? So you must know Constitution, Article 14, you must know Article 14. If you don't know Article 14, you cannot apply it to tax laws, at least in appellate jurisdiction or in a rate jurisdiction. So this is one aspect you must know. Next branch of law, partnership. Under the Partnership Act, how many persons constitute partners when a partnership comes into existence? Two. Huh? Four? Two or, more. Two or more. Can minor be admitted to the partnership yes, sir. for what? Losses? No, sir. Then? The profits. profits. So if a partner, a minor, he is a partner in a firm and he files his return through his father, then he must show himself as a partner of a firm. He will be assessed to tax only in accordance with the Partnership Act. So that is another aspect. Now next comes the property laws, transfer of property act. If you are not an owner of the property and you are deriving rent, it will not be assessed as income from house property. So this is another aspect. You must know transfer, the transfer of property act. So likewise, you must know all the branches of law. If you are not conversant with the branches of law, administrative law, Article 14, does it, consti does it inhere in itself the principles of natural justice? 
आंसर इज यस तुलसीराम पटेल वर्सेज यून ऑफ इंडिया दैट थ्योरी हैज बीन क्रैक्ट सो यू मस्ट नो दी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉ ऑल्सो ही हु हुईर्स मस्ट डिसाइड इफ द इनकम टैक्स ऑफिसर इशूज यू अ नोटिस इट इज ही हु हैज टू पास एन ऑर्डर इफ इज बॉस कमिश्नर पास इज एन ऑर्डर दैट विल बी अ नॉन एस्ट ऑर्डर बिकॉज यू मस्ट नो द इंटर केसिज ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉ ए सेटल प्रिंसिपल गुलापल्ली नगेश्वर राउस केस ही हु हुईर्स मस्ट डिसाइड सो इफ यू आर कन्वर्सेंट विद एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव लॉ स्ट्रेट अवे यू विल कैच होल्ड ऑफ द इनकम टैक्स ऑफिसर दैट यू हैव नो अथॉरिटी टू पास द ऑर्डर ऑफ असेसमेंट बिकॉज द नोटिस वॉज इशूड बाई माई प्रिडिसेसर सो लाइक वाइज दीज आर वेरियस ब्रांचेज ऑफ लॉ यू मस्ट नो अबाउट इट सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट इनकम टैक्स नाउ अंडर द इनकम टैक्स एक्ट सो फार इज द मशीनरी प्रोविजन आर कंसर्न दे आर लाइक Income tax appellate tribunal, that is an author third appellate authority. The first appellate authority is the Commissioner of Income Tax Appeals or Commissioner of Income Tax. This third appellate authority would be the Commissioner of Income Tax exercising the powers of revisionary powers. So, likewise, the entire uh, Income Tax Act contains the machinery provisions. How to determine a liability, and further, who will decide the appeal? how would an a revision be decided by whom it will be decided so you have various provisions under the act so this is what income tax act talks about then the another aspect is that under the income tax act you have section 119 that is very important the apex body on the administrative side is the central board of direct taxes now the central board of direct taxes issues instructions notifications how far those notifications are binding on the ssc or the department is a very moot question if a circular or instruction runs contrary to the provisions of the act will it be binding on the assessing officer now that theory has been cracked they said yes even if it runs contrary to the provisions of the act it will be binding earlier the view point was no it will not be binding but now they say it will be binding but not on the ssc any instruction or circular issued will not be binding on the ss so these are all interpretations now next very important aspect is always remember that income tax act under the income tax act the provisions are not to be interpreted liberally because equity is a stranger in the field of taxation laws now that theory again is being cracked because they say when principles of natural justice are applicable then why should the income tax provisions not be liberally construed why should equity being a stranger in the field of taxation laws be applied to tax laws so those aspect now there are various books on income tax say for example prithi sari and chaturvedi those are but they are very expensive 28000 set are running into about 14 or 15 volumes but if you can afford you must buy palki wala's book has now eventually phased out because it is not only expensive but then palki wala has died now persons who are, who are revising it they have their own views so you you do not have very much choice and then you have on the uh, books so far as uh, journals are concerned income tax reports i have about 80 research papers to my credit already published in international and national law journal on taxation side but then it is only after i practice for 38 years on this side exclusively in the high court supreme court and tribunals that's a long way you must choose your field very wisely join a senior or join a non senior who is conversant with the field in the field of taxation laws with the subject if you feel yes you can hang on hang on because when you give so you appear for subordinate judiciary papers their income tax there it is not a subject even if you are appointed as a sub judge you would very little know about the subject because during the training in uh, judicial academies they don't teach income tax direct taxes or indirect taxes but it's a field 
where you can really excel. It's only a misnomer, a khawa banaya hua hai, that or a baba, income tax is very difficult. That is why in the high court we have only gine chune six lawyers. There are only two, three seniors, apart from me, two seniors. I was designated as a senior in 2006. And all those two seniors, they were designated in 2012 or 14. But they are good. Seniors are not going to It's very difficult. Judge banna asana hai, senior banna baat mushkil hai. I'm being very vocal. I know the recording is going on. So I don't mind. But you will realize. Aap realize karoge, agar jo aap high court mein ya supreme court mein ya tribunal level pe kisi senior ko join karoge, you will really enjoy income tax field. And it's paying also, mind you, I may tell you. It's paying also. Jab maine profession join kiya tha, I joined criminal law practice. Because it was interesting. Everyone, you know, bada khush hota hai, lawyer, haan yaar, main criminal lawyer hoon. Ya aaj kal ek normal service law, service law mein practice karni hai. But, then service law only revolves around two or three provisions. Article 14, Article 16, administrative law. That's all. Principles of natural justice. Now, you have any questions to ask me, you can ask me. Any questions, you can ask me. You ask me any questions, I'll uh, try and answer your questions. Problem feel or you, you feel that no, you have not understood. I can repeat it. I can explain the provisions. No issues. Aapko koi basic scheme nahi samajariyo. You ask me, I'll try and uh, explain it to you. Ha, aapke na bolne se lagta hai kuch samay nahi hai. Anything which you couldn't understand or you cannot comprehend, you please ask me. It is really very interesting, I am telling you, once you join a chamber of a tax practitioner who is exclusively practicing before the first appellate authority CIT appeals or before the income tax appellate tribunal or before the high court, you must join his chamber for six months. You see, it is very easy to file a return of income because aajkal sara digital hai, computerized hai. Even a shopkeeper, 90% of the shopkeepers, they are maintaining computer. Salaried class, they go there, tell them this is my salary income, 20% deduction. My TDS has been deducted, so my refund banta bhaiya ye bhar do and he charges you 500. That is not practice. Practice is when litigation starts. SSE says, I am entitled to a deduction. The assessing officer says, you are not entitled to a deduction. That is from where the litigation starts. Or the assessing officer says, your return of income is not in time within period of limitation. The SSE says, no, it is within limitation. He says, all right, pass an order. He passes an order. Now that order is appealable. So that is from where the litigation starts. Now there is a latest controversy. All right, let me tell you from civil law point of view, since most of you are lawyers and must have been dealing with now with civil laws. Under the fiscal statutes, the income tax officer has the power to pass an order of assessment or reassessment. Consequently, upon the information which he has received, that so and so SSE who has filed his return has not filed his correctly because I had not sold any goods to him. And he has shown income or expenditure by way of sale or purchase. So therefore, his income which he has not been correctly shown. समझ आ गया? नहीं आया तो I can explain it again. मैंने एक third party से माल खरीदा. 
और अपने इनकम अपने रिटर्न में दिखा दिया जी मैंने एक्सपेंडिचर किया था या मैंने उसको बेचा तो मेरे पास जाहिर है पैसे आएंगे सो आई विल शो इट इन माई रिटर्न एज माई इनकम क्योंकि पैसे आए हैं नाउ दैट थर्ड पार्टी इज कॉट बाई द इनकम टैक्स ऑफिसर इन सम केस हि स्टेटमेंट इज रिकॉर्डेड ही सेज आई नेवर सोल्ड आई नेवर परचेज दी गुड्स फ्रॉम संजय बंसल now that statement is being utilized by the assessing officer who is the framing authority of sanjay bansal he says come mr sanjay bansal this is against you i propose to add it in your income i say sir kindly give me cross examination of that person who has deposed against me the assessing officer says there is no provision under the act for giving you the right of cross examination here is the statement so your all your accounts are false and i propose to assess you levy penalty and prosecute you also behind the bars now some of the high courts have held there is no provision so he can act upon the statement of a third party some of the high courts have taken the view that right of hearing which the assessee has under the income tax act includes the right of cross examination this is a fundamental right right to cross examine is a fundamental right why because it is it principles of natural justice they in here in itself the right of cross examination now this is a moot question now it has no, no mathematics involved i'm sure aapka impression dispel ho gaya hoga now answer this query interpretation pure interpretation pure involvement of fundamental rights constitute basic structure theory is fundamental right a part of basic structure who will answer it is minerva mills case then you have keshavnath bharti's case all those cases you must have done while uh, answering your paper in the field of constitutional law now pick up that theory import it in income tax say it is my fundamental right i have a right of cross examination even if there is no provision in the, in the act you must have uh, mohinder singh gill's case you must have read uh, versus the chief election commissioner supreme court came out for the first time that even if a provision of the act does not involve or it does not assign observance of principles of natural justice the principles of natural justice are to be read into the interstices of the provisions of the act if civil consequences flow if a party is affected so it will be automatically read as a part and parcel of the provisions of the statute even if there is no provision so right to the income tax act simple so it's nothing no mathematics it's pure interpretation a pure involvement of other branches of law constitutional law administrative law etc etc so this is how this is how the income tax act works so far as competition is concerned that of course is very simple how much income you have earned minus whatever expenditure you have you get your benefit deductions whatever the admissible deductions are there you can simple math simple mathematics to jab hum aata dal khareedne jaate hain tabhi usse pooch ke hisab lagate hain there is nothing there is no equation there is no theory of underlying mathematics jo aapne apply karni hai so this is Uh, this is what income tax is about so far as gst is concerned it is on the same pattern on the basis of charge changes there it is goods and services act so what is the value of goods what is the value of services here it is basis of charges income what is income anything which comes to you by way of earning is income what is excise excise is on the manufacturer the basis of charges manufacturer now of course it has ceased to exist there is no excise act central excise act isliye aap koi bhi act loge sabse pehle aapko pata karna padega what is the basis of charge if you know the basis of charge section 4 of the income tax act deals with the basis of charge and the basis of charges income income is defined what is income illustratively 
not exhaustively. So this is all. Anything else you want to ask me, you are welcome. कोई चीज आपको समझ नहीं हो, कोई चीज आपको नहीं आती, you can ask. In most of the universities in LLB, income tax is neither a compulsory subject nor in most of the universities it is taught because professors are not there. When I did my LLB from Punjab University, when I did my masters, there was no professor in income tax. There was only one professor who is to unceremoniously walk out from the class. Usko bote, unko bote de, sir, Guru Ji, hamari hajri laga dena. Ho kata, thik lag jayegi, jau. Income tax ka koi boot ka bhi nahi aata. Koi khreed ke dikha do, mujhe koi ho do. Koi aata hai? I have not come across. Koi aapko kitab nahi milegi. Bearat jaru mil jayega. Wo bhi 2000 rupega. Running into 500 sections. वो सेक्शंस भी ऐसे हैं जो समझ नहीं आते। एंड दैट इज़ व्हाई स्टूडेंट्स गो इन फॉर वेरियस ऑप्शनल सब्जेक्ट्स। आजकल क्रिमिनोलॉजी। उसके ऊपर नोट्स मिल जाते हैं रेटर रेटर आए लिख दो महावारत हाथी घोड़े तलवार सब निकाल लो हो गया पास। बट विद इनकम टैक्स इट इज़ नॉट लाइक दैट। � application of knowledge gathered after a period of time. It's not that you can become master of tax laws in two days, three days, four years, five years. Even today, when I prepare a case on the tax side, while in the High Court or Supreme Court, I have butterflies in my stomach. I am sure it's just like Amitabh Bachchan giving his shot. As in one of his interviews, he said, after putting in 80 years of experience in Hollywood, 70 years, I still have butterflies when I give my first shot. Because you never know, the judge might ask you any question, any and every question. All of you are from Army Institute? Acha. Who is teaching their tax? Okay, okay, okay. No, but in your law college, do you have uh, income tax as an optional subject or compulsory subject? Yes. And who is teaching there? Do you, they do, do they teach you interpretation part? Yes. This is it. <coughs> They must be teaching you how to compute salary and business income. That even a shopkeeper does on his computer. You go to him and tell him, this is my business income, fill in my return. He'll do that for you. So all these degrees are farce. You would agree with me. And how many, how many marks paper is that? 100 marks, oh my goodness. And five questions. Seven questions. Okay. And do they teach you what are the heads of income? What are the heads of income? How, how, what are those? Tell me. Hmm. That's not the head. Give me the mic then I here, please. My views come up. Let's see. Do you have any questions? How many income tax payers are there in India as per the data? About 8 crore. 8 crore? Yes, sir. I have seen it. I have seen it. वो आता नहीं नीचे 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 हाँ इन समय नहीं है सिक्स करोड़ हाँ वेस्ट रो और कितनी जनता कितनी पापुलेशन है इंडोस्तान की एक सौ पच्चीस से ज़्यादा ही हाँ और सिर्फ छः लोग 
और जब पकड़े जाते हैं तो कहते हैं गेस्ट प्लीज सेटअप होती है जब हमारे पास केस लेके आते हैं जनाब मुझे तो पता ही नहीं है इनकम टैक्स भी कोई चीज़ है आप लोग जब हमारी उम्र पर पहुंच जाओगे और जिनको आप ये प्ली लोगे कि जी हमने लॉ की हुई है लेकिन इनकम टैक्स नहीं हमें पता तो कैसा लगेगा देश को मैं जब पेपर सेटल था पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी में इनकम टैक्स का डेढ़ सौ शीट्स में से सिर्फ पांच बच्चे पास किए थे मैंने उसके बाद मेरे पास पेपर नहीं आए कभी चेकिंग के लिए और आप लोगों का यही हाल नहीं है एम में टैक्स पॉलिसी एंड टैक्स मैनेजमेंट एक सब्जेक्ट है सो so, गलती से मुझे दे दिए एंड रूडी इमेजन उसमें सिर्फ दो बच्चे पास हुए थे पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी मास कम्युनिकेशन डिपार्टमेंट बिकॉज ना पढ़ाया जाता है ना पता है हाई कोर्ट में भी यही है वहां जब जाते हैं ना तो वो सीनियर कह देता डेट ले लेना यार ठीक है मैं करूंगा यही चलता है सीनियर कभी भी जूनियर को नहीं देगा इनकम टैक्स का लिफाफा क्योंकि उसको दो डर होगा एक तो जल्दी सीख जाएगा और एक भाग जाएगा मेरे क्लाइंट्स ले गए और किसी भी हाई कोर्ट के वकील से पूछ लो कि वो एक टैक्स का केस आया मेरे पास यार मैं किससे गाइडेंस लूँ वो क्या संजय बंसल से ले रहे मुझे नहीं पता कुछ भी क्या तुझे क्या पता है कहते मैं तो बेल बेल कर देता हूँ फैमिली कोर्ट्स बेल भाई ये है काला कोर्ट बना ही इसलिए है क्रिमिनल लॉ सर्विस लॉ पेंशन नहीं मिली रिट कर दो फटाफट ओके नाउ वी कम ऑन टू दी नेक्स्ट चैप्टर That is the role of constitutional courts in the field of taxation laws. This is very important for you all of you to understand. Perhaps even if you don't practice on the tax side, and if you are a practicing lawyer in the high court, you would comprehend that what are the following characteristics or what are the conditions before you can go in for a writ. If the assessing officer has passed an order without hearing you, then it is contrary to principles of natural justice. So you can challenge it under Article Two to Six by way of writ petition. All right, no issues. The second aspect is where you have challenged the varies of the provisions of the Act. Say, for example. The Income Tax Act, by way of an amendment, or ropes in an SSC who does not have income at all, and they say still tax is payable by him. Now that provision is unconstitutional. Now you want to challenge that provision. Where will you challenge it? Under Article Two to Six. You can't challenge it before the appellate authority. because the appellate authority cannot go into the varies of the provisions of the statute next what could be the next ground let's see how many if you can react the income tax officer acts malefide he says under the table paise de de nahi to main teri abhi banata hu tera booth i will pass an order of assessment i will fasten you with the liability of 2 crores 3 crores i need the goose that is another acting malefide that is another so these are the grounds where you can invoke the jurisdiction of the high court under article 226 of the constitution amendment but then now the supreme court has become very wise very strict they say that if the appellate authority can go into the questions which the which question can be decided under the, by the writ court then alternative remedy will be a bar alternative remedy means the remedy of appeal which bar the writ petition or the supreme court has come out with the latest view that if the order is without jurisdiction or is patently illegal then the high court may in its wisdom exercise power under article 226 of the constitution amendment 
So these are the parameters where you need not file an appeal before the first appellate authority under the Income Tax Act, but you can invoke the jurisdiction of the High Court under Article 226 of the Constitution of India. Where a notice issued under 148 for reopening of the assessment is wholly without jurisdiction. Say for example, assessment had been framed, you had put forth all the documents, the assessing officer had applied his mind, he had assessed you. But after two years, three years, he issues you a notice on the same ground. Now that is not only a malefide exercise of power, but that is without jurisdiction. So you can challenge it before the Honorable High Court directly also. So these are the parameters of the filing of the writ petition where the constitutional courts, they come to the rescue of an aggrieved assessor. Anything else you want to ask me because I am running out of time now. If you want to ask me any question, you are welcome to do so. Law comes with discussion. I will just yeah, illustrate, I will give you by way of an illustration. When I, when I was in law college, yeah. IPC paper examination was after a few days. So I did, I did there is one series, Jhaba Wala. I don't know whether you studied. It is a beautiful series. So I got hold of that book. So 10, 20 uh, questions I noted down and I did that. So one of my professors, he is a retired professor, he was my class fellow at that time. So he came to my place and he said, what are you doing? I said, this Jhaba Wala will come to our rescue. He says, we will fail miserably. So I said, okay, let us, uh, you tell me what to do. So he said, come, let us go for a walk, I will teach you. I said, okay. So he started discussing with me what is intention, what is knowledge, what is motive, etc. Homicidal cases, he started discussing. So I said, okay, we discussed it. Next day, whatever the professor had taught us, nothing was there in the question paper. All practical. And what my professor had discussed with, with me during the course of work, I could, I just jotted down. And would you imagine I got 73 marks. Had I not adhered to his instructions, I would have miserably failed. And uh, not income tax lawyer? No, no, you forget about income tax. You are a civil lawyer. Yeah. Okay. What are the three guiding principles before stay can be granted? Order 39, Rule 1 and 2. Don't worry, I know civil law also. I have practiced uh, in the field of civil law for fairly 20 years. I was a civil lawyer to start with. I will correlate and I will connect. Why I have asked you this question is very important. Do you know what are the, uh, how, when can an injunction be granted? When can an injunction be granted by a civil court? मैंने आपकी जमीन हड़प ली आपने मेरे खिलाफ दावा डाल दिया यू फाइल अ सिविल सूट अलोंग विद एन एप्लीकेशन फॉर इंजंक्शन टेम्पररी इंजंक्शन ऑर्डर 39 रूल 1 एंड 2 परमफशाई केस का मतलब जानते हो व्हाट इज परमफशाई केस बिफोर स्टे कैन बी ग्रांटेड नो आपने सीबीसी भी नहीं पढ़ा लगता आई एम टेलिंग यू if you don't know civil law, you cannot deal with income tax. Abhi mein aapko example de. I'll just give you an example. The income tax officer, he assesses you at an income of rupees 1 lakh, which you are not liable to pay. He says you are not entitled to the deduction. The SSC Sanjay Bansal says, I am entitled to a deduction, sir. He passes an order of assessment. When you file an appeal before the first appellate authority, the income tax officer raises a demand. He says you deposit the amount or you get stay. I go to the first appellate authority submitting that kindly grant me stay. Now it is here, it is injunction. Three principles will have to come in, they will come into play which have to be fulfilled. That is Parmafashai case, balance of convenience, irreparable injury. If you do not know the concept of balance of convenience, Parmafashai case, 
you cannot stop the recovery as a lawyer. And it equally applies in the field of civil laws. If you don't know in the civil laws, you will become a judge of the judiciary. The first question in the paper is, what is Pramusha's case? Pramusha is not a judge. Pramusha is not a judge. It has various shades. Order without jurisdiction gives rise to a Pramushai case. Or an order based on a debatable issue that gives rise to a Pramushai case. What is irreparable injury? If stay is not granted, say for example, a makhan ka truck pagra gaya, police ne pagar liya, ab aapko stay chahiye, court mein aapne dawa dala, aapko stay chahiye. तो आपका इरेपरेबल इंजरी है कि जी मेरा मक्खन तो पिघल जाएगा मेरे को तो स्टे दो रिलीज करो मेरा ट्रक व्हाट इज दैट नाउ व्हाट इज बैलेंस ऑफ कन्वीनियंस हुल टेल मी आई हैव गिवन यू द लीड बैलेंसिंग द इक्विटीज इफ स्टे इज नॉट ग्रांटेड व्हाट विल हैपन सिंपल आप बैलेंस ऑफ कन्वीनियंस कन्वीनियंस लाइज ऑन विच साइड नो 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 Convenience lies on which side? If stay is not granted, that butter will melt. So, convenience lies on which side? Jiska loss ho raha uski taraf convenience hai. That's true. That's it. So, if you don't know these three principles on the civil side under Order 39, Rule 1 and 2 of CPC, all right. Appeal lies to a high court against the order of the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal under the Income Tax Act, right? On a substantial question of law. CPC section 100, appeal lies against the order of the district judge to the High Court on substantial question of law. What is substantial question of law? What is the distinction between question of law and substantial question of law? Chalo, let us see. How many of you can answer that? Substantial question of law means a question of public importance. It has various shades. Chunni Lal Mehta's case, 1960, Supreme Court. That is the basic judgment of the Supreme Court. Under the Income Tax Act also, an appeal will only lie if a substantial question of law arises. And substantial question of law means a question which is worth consideration, a question of substance. So, CPC, if you don't know CPC, you can't apply it to income tax. If you are both a civil lawyer as well as a taxation lawyer, you want to argue a civil case in the High Court. If you don't know the scope of Section 100, you cannot argue. As a taxation lawyer also, you want to argue, you cannot argue. Because you don't know what are the parameters. And the, and the parameters are the same. When can additional evidence be led? Under the Income Tax Act also additional evidence can be led. What are the parameters? Order 41, Rule 27 of the CPC. What does that You have to be quick. You have to be quick. LLB is not a degree. Degree you go Rajasthan. There are universities in Lakhnoi. You don't have to appear. Even Jindal Global can give you a good degree. Pay, get the degree. But you have to study. If you don't study, no point. You will keep on dragging with the senior or non-senior. Chalo ji, file hai uthao, chal do. 90% of the lawyers in India, they waste their time in the courts sitting and having tea in the bar or in the bar. They don't sit in their chambers and study. How many have you joined LLM? Any of you have joined LLM? Good. Which field are you doing? Give him the five. Sir, I have just taken admission. And, uh, um, Which university have you taken admission? Uh, GNU, That's a good university. Uh, Justice Rajiv Bhalla is the dean of that university. Uh, he's my neighbor, immediate neighbor in sector 10. No, he's good. He's good. That's good. How many uh, how many marks did you obtain in uh, LLB? 73. Oh, that's great. 
you missed by two marks. Otherwise, you would have done PhD directly. Now, UGC have amended the regulations. Any candidate with LLB with 75% can directly get admission in PhD course without doing LLM. Do you know that? Give your uh, papers again. Or review papers, hote na? you appear, you will get another two marks and you will be entitled to PhD. So now it's done. It's done. Yeah. LLM is one year? Yes. Sir. Oh, that's great. That's great. And you're doing in criminal law? Criminal. Okay. Should death sentence be abolished? Uh, what are your views? Sir, as it is a capital imprisonment, so like, uh, it's rarest of rare cases. What do you mean by rarest of rare cases? I, will, I asked a question, what is the distinction between substantial question of law and question of law? All right, we'll pick up a thread and cue from his uh, observation, his opinion. That, uh, what did you say? Come again? Sir, according to me, it is... Uh, Basically, justice, is, uh, justice should be provided by... Uh, no, I, uh, I, I murder four people. Yes, sir. And the judges say undergo life imprisonment. Yes, sir. And a person, another person, he commits he, a crime by killing three persons. And the judges, they say, hang him. What is this kind of a justice? Sir, it depends. To, uh, case depends? To case. case to case? I am giving you an example. In both the cases, it is brutal murder, homicide, cold-blooded murder. What is the what are the parameters of rare of rarest cases? मुझे समझा दो। Substantial question of law, question of law में क्या फर्क होता है? Which pricks the conscience of the judge is a substantial question of law. Question of law is which does not prick the conscience of the judge. Rare or rare of rarest cases is an act which pricks the conscience of the judge. An act which does not prick the conscience of the judge, he says, undergo life imprisonment. If it pricks the conscience of the judge, he says, hang him, take him to gallows. This is the distinction. What do you say? There's a lot of uh, research going on in this topic, in this field. Whether capital punishment should be abolished, that could be a good topic for you in criminal, uh, in PhD. Yes, thesis. That's right. That's right. Kiske, just pass on the mic. Just pass on the mic, please. Uh, sir, the law, IPC, evidence act, and the. They're changed now. They are, they are going to be changed as everything sections they are going to be changed. So, so your degree, the, your degree is a paper degree. Yeah. <laughs> good one, that's a good one. All the new candidates who are appearing here for taking an election, uh, they have to keep on repeating sections. No, then I may checkmate you. Yeah. You see, uh, not all the provisions have been have undergone a change. It's only few provisions which have undergone a change. And therefore, it you know, it has been uh, recyclo style. The subject has been cyclo style. For example, in IPC 302, everybody knows 302 is a murder. Huh. And 301 is different. Now, no, 301 is how it is different? No, sir. Homicide not amounting to murder? 300, 301, 302. is now changed to, I think, 99 section. Okay. I don't know, honestly. Maybe, sir. I have just. Going I am a tax lawyer, so I really don't know. So they all have to do the same thing again and again? No, what same thing? All the sections? No. The, series, the, 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 going to the Only the uh, uh, sections have been changed. They have been renumbered. Uh, they have been renumbered. That's all. Renumbered. Uh, renumbered. Uh, that's uh, all. Uh, so, they, they again keep on watching the books and uh, memorizing uh, the series, uh, their numbers, sections. You mean to say psychologically they are not ready to accept the change? You see, whenever a change comes in, they say change is the law of nature. You have to accept it. That's just a denomination. Yes, denomination was okay or wrong, you know. I don't have any money. Thank you. No, no, welcome.
you are a practicing lawyer from the police department oh that's a very dangerous department 19 1990 from where guru nanak i passed out in 1985 85 86 so all of you are gnd that's great well then, thank you very much. I am grateful to you all for being uh, mute spectators. <laughs> I am sorry if I have uh, overreached the board. But in any case, I wish you best of luck. All the best from my side in profession. And do remember me whenever you need me. Professionally or otherwise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.